So we're down in Costa Rica with all the America's Card Room team pros for some meetings and, uh, and fun. And of course, they hooked us up, so we're all staying at a casino. On this night of cash games, the rich team pros and Phil were playing uh, some silly 5-5, five, five, 10, 25 PLO. We can't afford that. So we went down to the minor league table, the biggest hold'em cash game that was running, which was 2-5 with no cap. We buy in for 410 or some shit, and ooh, here we go. First hand we're dealt, uh, it folds around to the button, who's a viewer of the vlog, but he says he doesn't watch videos. He raises to 20. We're in the big blind and look down at queen 10 of clubs. Of course, we call. We're heads up to a flop. It comes ace, 10, 3, hard heart, spade. We check. He bets 20. We call. Pot is now $80. Turn comes another ace. Check, check. We think for sure we have the best hand when the river comes seven of diamonds. I debate betting, but I check to decide to let him bluff, which I think is the better choice. So we check and he bets $35 into 80. We call and we win the pot. He said he had eight high, which makes sense. He doesn't need to bet big to bluff out all my like auto folds like king queen or jack high that beat his eight high he'd have to bet massive to get me to fold the 10 here so it's not worth it well played by both of us i think we're both geniuses the next hand of note not the next hand in reality but uh we have pocket tens in the cutoff it folds to us we raise to 15 dollars. the button calls and the big blind call we're three ways to a flop and it comes queen jack seven rainbow Always nice to see two overs to your good pocket pair. Big blind checks, we check. The button bets $20 into $45. The big blind folds and we decide to call. The turn comes a queen. So the top pair is paired. We both check. And the river comes a king. It's not the best card, but we block all the straight draw type of hands that get there with the straight. Only like king nine and stuff. Now river top pair, but there's no straights possible. I mean, we block all the straights possible. Anyway, we check and he bets $40 into 85. Any game, my thinking was that he likely does not have a queen or he would have bet the turn. So either he has a king or some nonsense slash bluff. So that plus the good price we're getting, we decide to call. He pauses and says, if you pay, you probably won and shows seven, six of diamonds. We win. Let's go. We see a few flops and uh, fold sometimes. We, we lose a few hands where we see flops and fold, including a hand where some scary guy with a face tattoo angrily jammed 350 into like 120 where we fold top pair. I was told that he said after the hand in Spanish, I don't know who this kid is. I don't care. So now a little bit into the session, Bet on Drew has now sat down and he's making the game much more wild. He's been in Texas for nearly a year now working at Rounders in San Antonio, shout outs to them. But his cash game antics are very Texas now and includes no looking at his hand until turns. The game loosens and I feel the peer pressure and loosen up quite a bit now. Shout out to Drew and Rounders. This hand, there's a button straddle to 10. We are in the small blind and decide it's good enough to limp with 10 deuce of clubs. We call the 10. The big blind raises to $45, gets two callers, and now it's back on me. And I really have no choice but to compound my mistake and put in the extra 35. So there's $180 in the pot. We have about 330 in our stack and we go four ways to a flop with our 10 deuce of clubs it comes pretty good for us queen jack nine with two clubs and a spade so we have an up and down straight draw and a flush draw we're, we're, we're in there we check the big blind the original razor bets 125 dollars it folds back to us and we clearly have the, the only show we jam our 330 dollars knowing he probably isn't folding very often but whatever we have so much equity he calls and we agree to run it twice he has ace queen of diamonds <laughs> We lose the first board, but bink a flush on the second. So we chop, win a little, and get a hand for the vlog. Let's fucking go. So still influenced by Drew's degeneracy mode. In this hand, we get ourselves into pre-flop trouble yet again. Drew opens to 15 under the gun. The low jack calls, and we look down at 9-5 of clubs in the high jack. I mean, this is a premium in Texas poker mode, so we definitely call. The button calls, and then John Party tries to fuck it up for all of us. He three bets to $80 from the big blind. Drew folds, the low jack calls, we got a call, you know, I mean, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Not compound my mistake again? The button calls, so we're four ways to a flop in a three bet pot with 240 in the middle with, <laughs> with nine five of clubs. The flop comes, 10, nine, four with two clubs and a spade. I don't think ever in my life a pair plus flush draw are we uh, not trying to get it all in. Anyway, John Party checks, the low jack bets 175 and we jam $350. It folds back to the low jack and he calls. So we're all in at risk again. He agrees to run it twice and shows he has top pair with no club. So he has jack 10 off and we have nine five of clubs. Pause the video here if you'd like to guess the odds we have. In the meantime, you can sign up for America's Card Room and use sign up code GAMBLER and, uh, you know, play some sick online tournaments in the United States. If you guessed 50.1%, you cheated because that's right. We have a massive 0.2% edge in this flip with our flush drawn pair. $960 pot. Let's win. Running it twice. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, God. On the first board, we turn a five for two pair. And on the second board, we hit a flush. We scoop the 960. Yay. The next hand of note. Drew raises to $20 in the cutoff. The button flats, and we're in the big blind with jack six of hearts. We call, we're three ways to a flop, 60 bucks in the middle, and it comes king, queen, six, one heart, two clubs. We check, Drew bets $20, and the button calls. And we degen call because all three of us are like 180 big blinds deep, and so I figure it's worth binking two pair trips or a backdoor flush because of the implied odds. I, maybe a full, but Drew's being wild. Who, who the hell knows? Um, anyway, so three ways to the turn, 120 in the middle. It's a king, so the top pair pairs. It checks around. Now the river comes in eight. And on the river, I'm thinking it's unlikely either of them have a king because all of the draws available on the flop that they wouldn't let the other people draw for free with trips. So given I think neither of them likely have a king and I lose to ace highs, I should bluff. Um, I bet 125 and they both fold. Drew announces he would have bluffed if I did not. I think this is a dumb bet size because I could have folded out under pairs to the queen or ace highs for cheaper. And maybe I didn't bet enough to get a queen to fold. So maybe it's just a mistake size, but the choice to bluff, whatever. But fuck you. We win. Next hand. John Party straddles regular style under the gun for $10. Drew calls now the real under the gun for $10. And it folds to us in the cutoff. We have pocket sixes. And we raise a little small, probably $35. Folds to the small blind who min clicks it to $70. John and Drew both fold. And still being like 900 deep with 160 in the middle, it's definitely worth it to set mine, I reckon. Um, we call not suspicious enough of how small his size was. Not that this would matter. Either way, we're going to set mine, but should be kept in mind for the rest of the pot. He checks dark, which is also weird. On top of the min click, he now checks dark, which is weird for the three better out of position. You know, these two things indicate massive strength in hindsight. Whatever, whatever. Fuck your, you know, I don't, whatever. Fuck your mom. So the flop comes 10, 4, 3 with two diamonds. And we figure with a backdoor flush draw and backdoor straight draw over pair to middle pair, we can bet and get value from his like ace, queen, ace, king. I don't know. We bet 75 and he raises to 175. I could probably give up here, but like I said, the backdoor straight draw, flush draw, and the chance that he's like a real bad cash game player bugging out with ace king. I convinced myself to call. Um, the turn is a seven. Comes We check, check. The river is a 10. He checks and we decide to check back. I'm for sure not trying to bluff him. I, I just need to take my equity and hope hope he just had his king or some shit. He has kings and we lose a silly pot. I don't know if I screwed up. It feels dumb when a guy was screaming strength, but who, who the hell knows. We're left with around 600 after the previous hand and we lose a few, win a few, including an all heart king high flop when we have king jack with the jack of hearts versus John Party. And we win another little pot where we three bet ace king and we flop king high, get a flop bet. Anyway, we now have like 700 effective for the main event hand of this vlog folds to the button who raises to twenty dollars there's the same kid from earlier who is a viewer who doesn't watch videos but he seems like a good rag in the game he raises to 20 the small blind folds and we're in the big blind with ace 10 of clubs i know in theory this is a three bet but i like to make decisions based on irrelevant factors often like this session is almost over and i don't want to play a big pot i'd rather book a win this is horrible don't do this don't think like this i'm an idiot but anyway we call and we get a pretty good flop Comes 10, 10, 2 with two diamonds and one spade. We check. He bets $10 into 40. And again, my instinct was to play horribly and just call like a real bad cash game player trying to exploit other bad cash game players. But I decide, I think correctly, that this kid is good enough to continue as he should with ace highs, backdoor flush draws, backdoor straight draws. So we ultimately make the right choice and check raise to $35. He calls. There's $110 in the pot going to the turn. The turn comes the five of spades. So it's a two tone board, two flush draws available. We now bet $100, he calls. 310 in the pot going to the river, and it comes the four of clubs. Now we think for a while. What will we be targeting with a bet? Are we trying to stack worse 10x or over pairs? I think for a while and eventually figure most of his calling range or our hands that we could possibly stack would be betting themselves the river often enough if we check to them. And also I think there's a chance he may spaz out versus what looks like we've given up on a missed flush draw. I, I don't really know, but we check and he's tanking and I instantly kind of regret it. I'm like, oh, I should have gone for value, get, get whatever to call, pocket eight, all types of shit that, that he's not going to bet with that he would call. But he tanks so long, the table is getting restless. And eventually, he jams my 540 effective into the $310 pot. But before I tell you what happens, let's go to Cash Game Wizard, fellow ACR Team Pro, and now YouTuber Rob Kuhn to get his take on how the hand was played so far. All right, DePaulo, let's go ahead and review the hand that you sent me. The button raises to 4x to $20. 
you decide to flat with the ace 10 suited, which is not a thing. You're supposed to be pure three betting this, especially off 150 big blinds effective. These hands play extremely well the deeper you are. Say you're 40 big blinds effective, you probably want to be three betting this as much. Anyway, the flop comes 10 10 deuce, miracle flop, and you go for the check raised. Uh, this is fairly standard. You're, you're supposed to lean more check call, but I think in live poker, it's probably better to check raise, especially with the flush roll out there. On the five turn, this is where you kind of lose me here because you decide to bet, what is this, over pot, something like that. Uh, you check raise to 35. He calls. Yeah. Okay. So around pot, you bet. Um, you generally don't want to use a pot sizing on any turns, uh, especially on a 10 10 deuce, because you lose all your ability to have bluffs. So, like, let's say if you have a hand like three, four or a flush draw, you never want to use this to a big sizing because it just allows you to have less bluffs. So you're going to have to opt to use more checks in your range. This is probably a little bit too complicated for you, but so be it. Seems like an easy spot, but it's actually a little more technical. The villain goes for the call on the turn and you decide to check the four river when the flush draw misses. This is actually a thing. Um, you know, the sim lords are going to tell you to probably bet most of the time depending on the you know depending on the suits which you have pretty good suits in this case because you unblock the flush draws uh with that said you go for the check the guy goes for the 2x pot and well i don't have to tell you to call that one do i anyway well played sort of you played the hand i guess it was poker i'm out of here I assume Rob said I'm a genius. I'm recording this voiceover before this, before he sent his video. But anyway, we obviously call. We're a little nervous, but not really. And we double up, obviously, right before the session's ending. He had ace seven of spades. He said he thought he had to turn into a bluff because he said he thought we had a hand like ace four of diamonds that he needed to bluff us off, which actually makes a lot of sense. But I think it's too specific of a hand that he's putting us on. His ace high has enough equity against my give ups. So it's probably not necessary. Either way, hell, chair. Yeah. We lose a few more hands, just a little bitches here and there before we cash out for $1,334. So we end up profiting about $900 in the session. That's a, that's a good session. That's good. That's pretty good. Hey, John, they misspelled your hat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrap from Costa Rica. For more dumb cash game blocks, subscribe. Hit the booty bounce on the dance floor. Now he doesn't deserve any applause. He called with King Jack.